Ladies and gentlemen, we are live for another edition of PBW versus AVW. Thank you to everyone who tuned in. Here we are in, West in Worcester, yeah, Worcester, Massachusetts. Thank you to everyone who tuned in to here at the moment. It's an absolutely insane night of cards. Our next type of view is a PBW specific review and reverence. But for now, we're on the AVW half and we're kicking off with this three way Extreme Rules match between James Kenny, Daniel Chandler, and Brett Willis. Let's go. The following contest is a triple threat extreme rules match. Making his way to the ring from London, England, weighing in at 250 pounds, Daniel Chandler. And here comes, ladies and gentlemen, the Whitechapel killer, Daniel Chandler, former Bloodsport champion, former tag team champion, both in PBW. However, He's here to hold a different type of gold uh, in AVW. He's trying to work his way to the top. He's had a really good record since he first debuted for AVW. I mean, since he first debuted for PBW in general. He's a very difficult and vicious man to take down. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing what Brett Willis and James Kenny have to try and overthrow him. It's not going to be easy for either of them, but then again, this is a triple threat. They don't necessarily have to beat Daniel to win the match. However, if either of them could, which is doubtful but possible, then it would be a huge favour in either of their caps. And his opponents, first, from Phoenix, Arizona, weighing in at 220 pounds, Brett Willis. And here comes the hardcore icon, Brett Willis, a man who's had very mixed success since his first debut. He does have a win of TJ Black, a very surprising win. And he's sort of forming a partnership, if you will, 
with Colin Poiper, who will be performing later tonight against Connor Gates. Neither man will be in their, the other's corner, but Brett Willis, he's got two men to worry about in this fight. I don't know how well Colin will help him, even though it is Extreme Rules and, well, it's AVW, all matches are Extreme Rules by default. But still, Colin could have proven a handy, handy essay in this match, but he's not in it. From London, England, weighing in at 320 pounds, the king, the hardcore icon, James Kenny. And here comes James Killer Kenny. Now he did lose his debut, yes, but he's here to prove any doubts they might have wrong. He's got a great look to him. And I feel like he has a lot of potential. Pardon me, but he does have to try and put it together, which is not going to be easy against someone as long and tenured as Daniel Chandler, as decorated as Daniel Chandler, and someone as tough as nails and as ballsy as Brett Willis. James James Kenny, I would argue, is the quickest one in this match, not not only by virtue of him being the smallest. but he is deadly quick and has his own vicious streak like Daniel Chandler does. And here we go. Chandler and Kenny meeting in the middle. Brett Willis waiting for them to do the work as Chandler hits Kenny with a series of gut wrench suplexes. Just sitting down the corner. Brett Willis not really getting super involved. And oh, now he does. He goes for a knee slide, but just basically tapped the knee of Daniel Chandler. And Kenny popping up for a hook and Rana. And now into a 619 as a regular move. Clobbering blow to the back of Chandler's head. Kenny turns his attention to Brett Willis. Chandler takes down Kenny there. Good counter by Brett Willis to Chandler as well. And now. Ooh. Sort of a sort of a fall away long suplex followed by the punch of the face. Chandler is forced to roll out and Brett is able to turn his attention to James Kenny. And the knee. And the sh Ooh, shining wizard, short range style. And now. Falling back on the arm. Vicious stuff there. One count. Chandler missed the breakup, but didn't really need to. And shim breaker to Brett Willis. Chandler with vicious series of punches to Brett Willis. Brett with the counter. Jawbreaker going for that knee slide again. Not able to fell down his Chandler quite yet. Kicks to the chest. James Kenny and Daniel Chandler trading blows. Go countered by Daniel and clotheslines Kenny right over the top. Oh my goodness, what a suplex on the top rope. Beautiful work by Brett Willis. Brett 
Willis really taking it to Daniel Chandler there. And oh, elbow to James Kenny. And he goes for a calf kick but misses. James Kenny putting Brett Willis in the tree of woe. And the drop kick to the face. Counter by James Kennedy to Chandler, though. Went for a stunner, maybe, but Ch uh, Chandler got over. Oh my god, a backflip kick with James Kennedy. Kenny looking to look at the ship on. Chandler lifts up Kenny. Oh, into a gut wrench German suplex. They're trying to steal the pin on Brett. One, just a one count. And now the Whitechapel drop. Now going for the pin. One, two, Brett kicks out. Now sort of a neck crank on Brett Willis as James Kennedy relaxes on the corner. And now Brett off the rope with the rock out kick. Rolling outside, going for a weapon. Kenny looking to end it. JKO! Good. Oh, neckbreaker attempt by Brett Willis, but James Kenny saw it coming. And a modified suplex there of sorts. Brett Willis won. Two, just two. James Kenny taking a breath after the punchman he dealt to the other two men. Front of the pin. One, just one count. Oh, massive leaping super kick to Daniel Chandler. That's his focus on Brett Willis. Oh my god, foot in the jaw. That could be it. One, two. Oh, James Kenny kicks out. But Brett Willis is feeling it right now. Close line, and another one. And a jumping one for good measure. Here for the pin. One. Break up by Chandler. It was busted open by the JKO earlier. And now we're looking. Oh, 1888! That could be it. One, two, three. Daniel Chandler. Dominant win here for him. Really good work from the man there, from all three of them. But Dan Chandler is the one who would succeed. Despite being busted open, the only man who was bloodied in that match, which I find interesting. Whitechapel killer Daniel Chandler, blood pouring down from his head down to his nose. I might have to back, but standing tall with a win and a triple threat, not an easy thing to do. 
but further proving why he was such a good champion, Bloodsport and tag team. Next up, though. A match between two men who could do with a win. Andrew Blackwell more so. But I'm looking forward to seeing how this goes. Andrew Blackwell taking on Roger Finesse. This is going to be an interesting one. Making his way to the ring from Houston, Texas, weighing in at 203 pounds, Andrew Blackwell. Here comes Andrew Blackwell, a man who has, he's in need of a win, basically. I don't think he's won since he debuted, but he's definitely a fun superstar to watch nonetheless. And the person he's going up against is no slouch. Roger Finesse is the winner of the first ever Kept the Crown match, let's not forget. And although he failed at, um, at his attempt at getting the world title around his waist, he's still a really good uh, wrestler, obviously, as is Andrew Blackwell. It's going to be interesting to see the way this goes for both men. And his opponent, from Hartford, Connecticut, weighing in at 240 pounds, Roger Cole! And here comes Roger Finesse, the man with the drippiest drip that ever did drip. College basketball player. And obviously, due to his size and frame, he decided to take up pro wrestling, and he did really well in that too. Championships and other promotions. Which I think is an NBA championship ring. I could be wrong about that. I would say you're not allowed to wear rings when you're in pro wrestling, but this is Extreme Rules, so he could wear one and punch Andrew Blackwell in the face with it, and it would be completely legal. again. And here we go, Andrew Blackwell, Roger Finesse. It's 
two men in need of a win. Who will get it? Rojo starting early, going for a double leg takedown and looking to wrap around the ankle of Andrew Blackwell, trying to weaken some of his leg strength. Which is very smart because both these men are technicians. You wouldn't know it from looking at Roger. I mean, with Andrew Blackwell, it's a bit more believable, but Roger Finesse, due to his height in general, you'd think that he was just like a big powerhouse, but no, he's deadly quick and very, very smart as well. He loves to go for limbs, as you can see, he's focusing on Blackwell's leg. And Blackwell, with the kicks and stomps, the leg's not weak enough to not do a lot of damage, but they have been hurt. Make no mistake about it. Good calf kick by Roger Finesse. Now looking to stretch on the arm there and the leg. Focusing on the right leg specifically of Andrew Blackwell. Blackwell rolls through and escapes though. Avoids that calf kick. And going for a weapon, maybe? Yep. <laughs> Roger Finesse with the casual Duncan knocks the baseball bat out of Blackwell's hand. Well, the two collided there. Missed with the drop kick in the corner there. Duck under. Went for the drop kick, but missed from that close and that big a target. Ooh, big elbow in the corner there by Roger Finesse, and now going for a pin early. One. Just a one. Good arm ringer attempt, but dropped toe hole by Roger Finesse. Two collar and elbow. Oh, I think Andrew went for a drop kick. But Roger caught the legs and dropped Andrew on his back there. And now again working on the legs, going for a booter lock. Now one thing about the motor lock is it does a lot of damage to the legs and the neck, but the arms are very free. As you can see there, Andrew Blackwell using his hand to separate Rogers and get out of it. Corner. Good crossbody. <laughs> Roger Finesse casually doing a handstand walk. Just because he can. There's a big drop kick from Andrew Blackwell. Good arm slam there. Debating picking up the baseball bat, but working over the arm of Black uh, of uh, Roger Finesse. Now with the baseball bat, oh, right to the stomach. Puts it down. I wouldn't have put it down if we were Andrew Blackwell. That is an advantage in this match. Granted, an advantage that Roger Finesse can also use, but still. After a couple of drop kicks, but a bit, a bit discombobulated, and oh, Duncan falls by Roger Finesse. Now looking to take Andrew Blackwell to FNU, and Andrew Blackwell forced to tap. Pretty easy day at the office for Roger Finesse, so to speak. Andrew didn't make it too easy for him though, and that black uh, and that baseball bat really came into play, but just wasn't enough to put Roger away. That's all it took, one FNU. And Andrew could not graduate. Here is your winner, Roger Cole. Roger Finesse. Every right to celebrate there. He went sicko mode on Andrew Blackwell's ass. Not like that though. It may be like that. Anyway, next is a tag team matchup between the Wild Ones and the best enemies now. Marilyn Benson is very angry at the fact that Sarah Price is the current Limitless Champion. So, she's going to do something about it. And I'm looking forward to seeing what we get out of these two teams.
on the way to the ring, Marilyn Benson and Wildcat, the Wolfpack. Here come the Wild Ones, former Limitless Tag Team Champions, and on the right there, Marilyn Benson, a former Limitless Champion. It's not going to be very easy for her, especially considering that Sarah Price can pick any opponent she wants. So Marilyn could feasibly only really pick... Uh, Marilyn could only feasibly win it back if Sarah would pick her, but I don't think Sarah's going to do that anytime soon. Speaking of, Sarah has asked for a submission match at Reverence to defend the title. And it's going to be against... Hang on, let me find it. Uh, Taylor Jones, Taylor Jones. And their opponents, Ultraviolet. And here are Judas and Sarah Price, the best Sarah Price with the limitless title strapped around her waist and it covers pretty much her entire midriff there. I knew she was small and skinny, but that's kind of a that's kind of ridiculous. <laughs> However, despite her size, she is upset. She, she scored a lot of upsets, especially the one she scored at Heat at the moment, where she became the champion. Here we go. To start us off, the former champion and the current one, Marilyn Benson versus Sarah Price. Sling Blade by Benson. And a big slam there. And now going for a... Ooh! An interesting variation on the neckbreaker there. Good against Jawbreaker by Sarah. And trips her. Tags in her partner. Very smart. Drew's looking to wrench on the arm there. Which is smart because a lot of Marilyn Benson's offense comes from her arms and her upper body. Especially her finisher, the Ark's End. She does have the other fish of the Tornado and Zaguri, but most of her power is in her arms and she's finding that she's uh, not being able to use them. Oh, that was interesting. Good sweep from Benson, sort of countered the drop kick by, by Judas. Into the corner. Maybe looking for a tag maneuver, not able to get it. Do a counter elbow by Judas. And a crossbody. Counter uppercut by Benson. A kick to the back. Now looking to tag in her partner, and she does. In comes a diesel Lingo Akeke. Kick to the stomach, and with a stomp right into the mat. Good counter by Judas, though, and clotheslines her into the corner. Lifts a uh, alley power bomb. Now, Judas is a former PBW Women's Champion. So, both members of uh, of Best Enemies have held singles gold now, but they've never held tag gold. Now, uh, interesting variation on the figure 4, but Adisa able to get out of it. Adisa with a... Oh, big, big slam there. Fall away slam. Kicks. Judas with a good counter. Adisa with one of her own. Now, oh, massive driver there. Fisherman's Buster driver. But Judas playing possum. Now, 
double back body drop by the Wild Ones. Judas tried to crawl to a corner, Benson not letting her get there yet. Good counter by uh, Judas. And stun gun on the rope. And slamming Benson's head right on that mat. Judas has a vicious streak, unlike most in the women's divisions. Went for that knee but missed. Grown into Wild One's corner. Now what are the Wild One's looking for? Quite possibly the walk of shame. Judas was trying to reach her corner but wasn't able to. Adisa preventing her. Now into the ropes with the drop kick, but Judas ducked out of the way. And massive belly to belly suplex. One. Two. It is the kicks out. <laughs> Best enemies might be looking to win this. Nope. Big crossbody. I thought they were going for the finisher, but they did not. We're going to point Issa. And another one by Issa. Countering the current uh, countering the current limitless women's champion. The knees in the corner. Push over against the rope. Looks under. Pyro can run a beautiful technique there. What you do so kicking. Okay, okay. Oh, flops over right into that clothesline. Good handspring there. You don't really see a lot of front handsprings. I think this is the walk of shame. That it is. There we go, they're, they're going for it. One, two. No, Sarah kicked out. Adisa stopped Judas from bringing up the pin, but Sarah kicked out. Oh, good counter by Sarah. Ate that punch, but turned it into an enziguri. And now dabbing. Tom Jerkin would be furious if he was watching this. Sarah, oh my goodness, the strength of someone so small. Tried to dump Benson over the barricade, but Benson broke out. Who counted by Sarah. Benson dangerously close to being in proximity to Judas now as well. Base first off the apron. Hook into her elbow by Benson. And oh, massive super kick there. Lifts her up. And oh, drops her right on the apron. And back in the ring they go. Sarah was trying to reach Judas, but Benson says no. And another fall away power bomb variation thing you do. They're looking to end it. Looking for the arc's end. Into the pin. One, two, three, and the wild one's just one. 
Not just that, but Benson pinned Sarah Price. My God. Really good match between these two teams, but... Damn, Benson may be able to vent out some of that frustration since losing the Limitless Championship. Especially because that Sari kicks out of that. Here are your winners, Marilyn Benson and Wildcat, the The Wild Ones celebrating a big victory here. Over, let's not forget, one of whom, uh, over, over the best enemies, one of whom is a former PBW Women's Champion. The other, the current Limitless Champion, uh, the current Limitless Champion, excuse me. So, that is interesting. The fact that Benson specifically wanted to beat Sarah. Next up, though, for the one-on-one -on -one match, Colin Piper versus Connor Gates. I mean, I don't really need to say a lot about this one, I just think it's going to be a good match, so, yeah. It might be striking my to put my own wrestler against someone as good as Colin Piper, but I want to see how it goes. Making his way to the ring from Tokyo, Japan, weighing in at 195 pounds, Colin Piper. And here comes Colin Piper, the master of the Yariot. Former member of the stable over in CWL, now the Misfits are both on PBW. However, both men are singles competitors. And Michael is actually part of a different tag team, currently part of the Paymakers with Nate Slater. Colin Piper, sort of, a, sort of, sort of having a, a budding friendship with Brett Willis. Now looking to put up, uh, to put away a very dangerous competitor in Connor Gates, who has held the Open Championship championship. Connor Gates has won a lot. Co uh, Colin has not won a title yet. But he's always a perennial contender, and he's not going to let anything stop him. And his opponent, from Birmingham, England, weighing in at 210 pounds, the anarchist, Connor Gage. And here comes the anarchist, the leader of the misled, Connor Yates. He fell out of favour uh, with the fans, but recently fell back into favour with them. Obviously over in CWL he is a he is a champion. I don't want to say what belt because I'm afraid I might jinx his chances. <laughs> but still, 
He's held multiple times. AEW hasn't held anything yet in AEW. Did have a chance at the Heavyweight Championship at Cutting Edge, but came up just short. So here we go. Good stop by Colin with that go buster. Good counter drop to hold by Connor. Counter find his carry by Colin. Punch to the gut. Looks like Colin's target might be Connor's uh, stomach area. Try and weaken the strength of his kickouts, maybe. Going for the back as well. Elbow drop to the spine. Connor showing a bit of life there, counter arm drag. Shorts over and over with those punches. Stomping Colin, trying to keep him down. Colin evades that one though. However, Connor right there with him, off the ropes. Big elbow. And then knees to the back. <laughs> Doing a bit of taunting there as well. Yeah, looking for the arm wrenching slam. There it is, right on the instep of on the inside of the elbow. Speaking of going for that now, focus on the arms of Colin Piper, which is smart because Colin Piper's biggest moves are with his arms. His legs are deadly vicious. He is very very strong. Going for the chop there, and big drop kick to the side of Connor's head. Shot, uh, sh shoulder charge to the back. And for the pin. One. Just a one count. On the apron goes Connor. Bully looks, looks to knock him off, but Connor counters. And he in, intercepted it. Wrenching on the neck of Connor. And jawbreaker. Golf kick. They're looking. Oh, pulling back on the arm and just the kick to the side of Colin's head. They look for a single like Boston Crab. Good roll through by Colin. He breaks out. Colin knocks to the outside. Colin to call it in him. Back to his feet though. Going to the top rope. Has he got a plan for him? Oh, massive mick. And back suplex. And another one. Dropping. Colin Piper on the back of his neck. And they're looking for the code bled on the outside. He needs to roll Colin in the ring quick and get the pin on him if he can. No, Colin. Counts the punch. And uh, counters the punch and gets a chop. And the backdrop driver. Clocks Connor with a massive yariot. And now looking for a weapon. Gets a kendo stick. Right to Connor's stomach. Hang on that. Throws him back into the ring. Does not pick up the candlestick before going back in. Sets Connor into the corner. 
good counter by Colin. Looks under. Big clothesline by Colin Piper. He has the energy of the crowd right behind him now. Looking for another backdrop driver. That's usually a prelude. But Connor is countering Colin right now. Good counter by Colin. And the knee and the Yariot. Into the pin. This could be it. One. Two. No, Connor just about kicks out. Another counter by Colin. Fun staying with him though. Cancels the chop into another punch. And now looking for a code bled. Now hooking the leg, this could be it for Colin. One, two, three. Connor Gates with the win. That was a hell of a match. Here is your winner, the Anarchist. Connor Gates standing tall. A big victory under his belt. Wonder what he's going to do with this, but hopefully it'll lead to something more down the line. Next up, Carolyn Hale, the former AVW Women's Champion versus Kashina Miyazaki. Now, I do want to remind people that there's not a lot on the line for those leading up to the PBW pay-per-view, but I still want to put together some really good matches, so I figured this would be one of those. Making her way to the ring from Beijing, China, illustrious Carolyn Hale. And here is the illustrious one, Carolyn Hale. Straight out of Beijing, China, one of the best women superstars to ever step foot in the ring. A former Avian, and you can bet she wants to look a path. Uh, she wants to look to start a path to get that goal back. I'm not talking about the Golden Path, although she could be included in that tournament. I'd love to, I would love to see it, personally. However, looking for a path to redemption that starts with the win of Kachina Miyazaki. And her opponent, from Kyoto, Japan, the Hooligan. Speaking of, here comes the Hooligan. Big Kush, as she's also called. Kashina Mizaki uh, has only had one match in AVW so far and she did not get the victory. However, she could very well change that, especially over someone like 
a former women's champion. I mean, that'd be a hell of an accolade for her if she's able to pull it off. To be fair to Kashina, her first match was against Akita Tureshi, who almost nobody has beaten, so... Kajina starting strong with that rolling kick. Going for the elbows, Carolyn caught one though. And the axe kick to the back. And one to the back of the head for good measure. God, the striking between these two is going to be something phenomenal. And, oh, flips her over into that neck breaker. Hope the drop kick been missed. Into the corner. Good counter knees by Kashina. And the Famouser. Butterfly suplex and taking out easy. Good. Counter by Carolyn into the drop toe hold. A knee. Good boost to GTS. And now flips her off into the arm drag. They're going for the pen. Not even a one count. Drop kick to the back of the head by Carolyn Hale. And one to the side of the face as well. Carolyn Hale apparently not picky about where she drop kicks you in the head as she goes for that stomp right on the face. Now she's looking to go to the top rope, maybe? She's having trouble. Oh, now she gets it. But Kashina counters with the Enziguri. And up. Oh! Good balance there to get that kick off. Now she hops to the outside. Is she going to get a weapon? She is. What she got in mind? She gets a table. Lobbers Carolyn with it. Good cancel by Carolyn though. And massive back suplex. Now into a German. Now looking to end it with a traditional vertical suplex. And the kick to the back angers her way through that. Now lifting Caroline Hill up. And face first on the apron she goes. Now she ended up picking up the table. Oh, right on the legs of Caroline Hale. <laughs> Massive choke slam. No, I think Caroline counted. Into a DDT or something. Sheena wrecking over that. Although <laughs> to the back of the head, excuse me. Massive Hurricane Rana, Kashina Miyazaki taking it really well against the AVW Women's Champion, the former AVW Women's Champion. Now, oh, Kashina did tap out, but it has to be in the ring. The ref is not going to. Spinning back fist. And now that choke slam backbreaker connects that sign. This has been a big fight on the outside between these two, but they've got to debate getting it back in the ring if they want to finish it. As Kashina basically, I think she currently with one of her own moves there. They look for a finisher, but could not get it. However, Kashina intelligently countering. Big slap. 
and dropping, looking to drop Carolyn face first onto the steel steps. I think looking, I think that's a variation on the illustrious clutch, but, and Kashina does tap, but Count has to be in the ring. They're looking for a straight jacket neck break out shoulder. Oh, thrown under the steps though. To the outside. Sheena not gonna bother brawling with her though. And oh my goodness, Alabama Slammer. But a counter from Carolyn. Looking for that neckbreaker once again. Now she's interestingly made Kashina tap twice with the illustrious glitch, but both times Kashina was on the outside. Oh my goodness, a gut wrench German backdrop driver? I don't really know what to call that, too. I've never seen that move before. Kick to the side of the face. Grand Hale basking in the crowd right now. And the axe handle and another one. Dux under catches Kashina with the big clothesline. The snapmare takes down and looking for the uppercut to the back of the head. Now from the pen. One, two, Gina kicks out. Carolyn looking to set up the siren song to end it. Now looking for the illustrious clutch instead. She's gonna make her tap. She does. Yoshina Miyazaki is forced to tap, and Carolyn Well uh, Carolyn Hell adds another win to her resume. Here is your winner, illustrious Carolyn Hale! Carolyn Hale with a hell of a win as we move on to our main event of AVW. Which is going to be between the Star Jammer, the Honky Stonk Man J. Scott and Alexander. And here they are. <laughs> main event time, J. Scott versus Alexander. This one.
making his way to the ring from Washington, D.C., weighing in at 227 pounds, Jay. And here comes the star jammer, the, I know you want me to say it, gang, the, the honky stonk man is going down to the ring right now. Now, Jay Scott has had a surprising since he first debuted in AVW. He's here looking to continue that streak of success against a former long reigning PBW, PBW International Champion in Alexander. Jay Scott has got it all the looks, the charisma, presumably the penis. I don't really know. He's got the talent. He just needs to find a way to put it all together. Taking in the crowd. I'm I'm proud to admit that I am a member of Star Gem LLC at, at heart. And here comes Alexander Hammond Cheeselton. I hate this guy, I tell you what. He's the general nemesis, he's the general pain in my ass. However, he's also really talented, and I love fun to watch in the ring, and he puts on good matches sometimes, so may as well stay. <laughs> I really hope Kirby's not actually watching this because he knows I love him, but I think the joke is everyone just hates Alexander now, so. <laughs> Yeah, I, I know, he's streaming. Go over to a stream and tell him I love him. Anyway, match starting and Jay right out the gate with Hurricane Rana. And the, the chop block to the front of the leg. Alexander with a counter though. Lifts Jay up. Onto his shoulders and into the jump suplex. Jay with another Hurricane Ronnie. You don't see Jay going for, for flying moves too often. He's more of a grounded fighter. And that got around to suplex to Alexander. Now stomping on the arm. Very smart of Jay to do, he needs to focus on the limbs of Alexander if he wants to take him out. Alexander with the back body drop. And now the first to go and try and grab a weapon, what's he gonna do? He gets himself a table, we saw one of those earlier. In fact, in the match before this one. And clocks Jay right with it. Good Hurricane Rana by Alexander. And a stomp to Jay's very handsome head. Throws him back into the ring. The shot before Jay can get up, knocking him down again. But Jay, counter shoulder tackle. And the springboard right into the vicious stomp on the leg. Look for the axe handle, but just missed. And the punch is over and over again from Alexander. Went for a calf kick, I think, but Jake. Looking for a key lock. Alexander to break out. Kicks the leg by Jay Scott and going for the reverse this time. And, ooh, big fisherman's driver. Yeah. 
Jay goes for that again. Very smart. Jay Scott needs to focus on that leg of Alexander. Oh, massive lariat though. Neck rank by Alexander. And now it flipped over into the arm drag. That's the first pin attempt and Jake X out at one. This has been a really good main event so far, I will admit. And the drop kick right to the side of the face. And now the Yorktown face buster. Into the pin. One, two, J kicks out. Alexander is probably going to look to set up the finish. Looking for the revolution. And the kick. And he gets it. And that could be it. One, two, three. Alexander wins the main event. I'm sorry, Jay. I really am. Good match from both men, though. Alexander picking up the win. Wasn't easy. Alex uh, Jay Scott made it a task for him. Still a good match. Probably the best match of the AVW um, seg uh, section of the card, by the way. I wouldn't call it match of the night. I don't think we're there yet, but so far, match of the night. Really liked it. Here is your winner, the superstar. Alexander celebrating with that, with, with his tongue out. I don't know why he does that. Ain't the Undertaker, buddy. You ain't known what he's earned. Anyway, I'll see you all in about five minutes after I've set up the PBW card, so uh, yeah, see you in a few.